So let's take a look at this for example. We have our front squat, our high bar back squat, and our low bar back squat, and these are all going to be slightly different, but they create different uh, forces due to the fact that they also have different moment and lever arms, right? So the light blue section is going to be our moment arm from the hip joint. So in the front squat, you can see that it is uh, significantly smaller than the high bar back squat and the low bar squat in that order because the bar is placed in a different location. So it's on the front of the shoulders as opposed to the back of the shoulders. So that increases the distance from our hip joint to the line straight down from the uh, the bar that the force from that bar makes, right? And then our green line is going to be the moment arm from our knee. So with a front squat, we're going to have much greater uh, moment arm on our knee joint than we would on the high bar or the low bar back squat. So this means that the demands of that joint increase. So what are our, what's the muscles that control our knee joint? The quads. So our quad action is going to be much greater in the front squat than it would be in the back squat. Also, these lengths are not always static, so they're, they're constantly changing as you go through a range of motion. And the moment arms are always going to be perpendicular to your line of force so that they can, uh, they can and will change at different points of the lift. So here's a picture of somebody coming out of the bottom of a squat, and they're about halfway up. So you can see that the, the lever arm doesn't change which would be the femur, so that's the easiest way to look at it, is your, your lever arm is going to be mostly, most of the time, your bones, um, because they're the lever performing the action, but your moment is still that distance from the joint to the bar. So as you ascend in the squat, your moment arms are going to shrink, and it's going to shift onto a different part of the musculature. And there are numerous ways to load a movement pattern like we've been talking about. And placing the body in a position to create longer moment arms and, long, and lever arms is going to directly load that particular joint more. So if you can create, come up with an exercise or choose an exercise that has a much larger moment arm, it's going to be much more demanding on that joint. And more load on a joint also means more emphasis on that targeted musculature controlling the joint. So if we have a longer moment arm exercise targeting the knee joint, we're going to have much more demands on our quad.